Here we go. Yeah. G. Welcome to Cajun Guitar uh, Workshop, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, who is here to actually learn a little bit about the, the guitar itself? Okay, good. <laughs> good, a couple of people. So um, I think what we're... Hi, Pat. <laughs> good to see you. Um, so I think what we're going to do is just talk about the different styles of strumming that you can use when you're playing Cajun music in a band versus an acoustic set like this. Um, we'll kind of talk about the rhythm part of it and the percussive part of it as well as the, the bass line for songs. Because when you're, when you're playing a two-piece or a three-piece or even in an acoustic jam, you typically don't have a bass guitar, you typically don't have drums. So as an acoustic guitar player, you kind of want to have that and you want to be able to, to do that for the people that you're playing with. So um, we'll start with a, uh, with a waltz first and keep it simple. And I'll show you the different styles. So we did this one earlier today, but it's one of my favorite ones to do. So you have an open style strumming. And then you also have a closed style strumming. And you can see that on the open style, it's not quite as percussive as the closed style. Right? And so for me, the song dictates what style I'm going to play in. So we'll, for this particular waltz, when I heard this waltz, um, attention, c'est mon cœur qui va casser. Um, my heart is Pay attention because you're breaking my heart, basically, is what it's saying. Um, it's easy for me to feel the uh, not so much percussive as the bass line. I want to hear that bass line walking down. So we'll demonstrate to you what that means. Après, oui, 
les jongler. Attention, c'est mon cœur. Attention, c'est mon cœur qui va casser. All right, so that's just an example of the walk down on the bass line. Yes, sir. Are you calling it open because you're using more open chords with that job? Yes. Yes, that's exactly what I mean by that. On, on an open chord, the strings can ring. I'll do it in G for you. The strings can continue to ring. So as you're walking down, so you got your bass guitar and you still have your rhythm there, right? As opposed to, let's do it the same song with a closed style, we'll do it in G. Okay. So this is, some people use a bar card, which is they take that first finger and they, it's, it, it acts the same as a capo, which um, I'll tell you a quick story about a capo. So I had just started playing guitar and I wanted to learn how to sing because all of my bandmates in Bonsoir Catin knew how to sing. So I went up to this woman's house in West Virginia. Her name was Jenny Hawker. She's a fantastic folk singer. And so I go up there and she says, um, well, I'd like for you to sing a song for me. So I said, okay. So I sang a song and she said, well, honey, I have a question for you. And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, what makes you think you can't sing? And I said, well, I mean, I, I try and sing with the radio, but it, it just, it's, the songs are too high and my voice just doesn't fit and, and I just, it just doesn't sound right. And she said, well, doggone it, girl, use a capo. <laughs> and I said, what's that? <laughs> I had no idea. So she said, come in here. So she pulled me in the other room and she got this thing and she said, this here, honey, is a capo. And she said, you put that on your guitar. And she, so she had a guitar and she showed me and she said, now sing. Attention. And she said, nope. So she moved it here. Now sing. Attention. Better, she said. And she moved it here. And I sang. Attention. She said, there you go. That's your key. And she said, and what you do when you go home is you find you some musicians that can play in that key. And if they can't, you fire their ass. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, so that's what I did. I came home and I found Bo, and he can play in any key. But um, so the the bar card basically it acts as it acts as um, a capo, shutting it down, so you can play. But I never did really learn how to do the bar card because the guitar player in my Cajun band, the Lafayette Rhythm Devils, played it in a in a C shape wherever he went, and he uses his thumb. I don't know if you guys can see. He uses his thumb as a walking bass line. See? So that's how I do it. But you can do the same thing with a bar card. You just don't have that bass line. No, you do. I guess you can. Yeah. But um, so let's play a little bit of the open, and then we'll G compare it. In, yeah. So here's the open again. Everything rings and it's just beautiful. And to me, when I hear that song, that's the type, that's the style that I want to play in that particular Cajun waltz. Now, we'll contrast it with the closed chord or the bar chord method, and you'll see the difference of what I mean. Okay. So 
So do you see the difference? Yes. I am. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll talk to you about that. And yeah, thank you. I'm glad you asked that question. So you know, if we're playing, I guess my question in my head whenever I start to play a song is, what feel do I want for that song? So for the workshop or for the thing that we just played over there, where we had a bunch of people listening, and I'm I'm singing and I can express myself, and I want it sad and pitiful and sorry and I want people to start crying <laughs> then I'll use that that open sad thing but if we're playing and they have a bunch of people who are dancing then I'm gonna use this because it's more it's more driven right it's more driven so that's kind of how I decide which way I'm gonna which way I'm gonna use it now on the the closed cards are like a, a two-step um, that's when I'll start not so much the walking bass line, but I'm more interested in that percussive, you know, because I want, I want that boom and I want that, that snare hit whenever I'm playing. And, uh, and Bo can tell you as a fiddle player, matter of fact, one of the me shows uh, just mm -hmm. said, yeah. I can't get over how, how full with just two people. No, what he told what he told me was he said, dang, gosh, can she back you up? That's what she said. That's what he said. Because from a fiddle player's perspective, you know, we need somebody that's gonna play and keep you in the pocket, you know, and play. And if you need if it needs percussive or if it needs to be to be laid back, a rhythm player has to know how to do that. You know? Yeah. So I'll give you an example of uh, a couple of different styles of strumming with a with the closed chords on a two step. Let's do the 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 back door. Okay. Um, and I'll just do it really really simple. Just let in, me know when you want to stop it. Okay. okay. So that's the, that's the simple boom chuck, boom chuck, boom chuck. Um, and kind of what I'm doing, I don't even know what I'm doing. Let's see what I'm doing. You know, and that's one of the things, I'm just gonna pause right there and say this. I learned how to do the guitar on my own. I tried watching Christine Balfa play and do the Balfa strum and it just, it didn't work for me. So when I started playing duets with Bo and with uh, Richard Como, I just kind of did what felt right and what filled in the space and what as, because I, I truly am a drummer at heart, I just mm -hmm. don't want to carry all the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I, try, I tried to do it on the guitar and if you, this one is a new guitar but you're starting to see the wear and tear on it but if you would see my other one it kind of looks like Willie Nelson's guitar and that's from that, that percussive snare drum that I'm hitting on my guitar, all right? So that was the straightforward. So this is kind of how I would typically do it. But you see the difference between those two? Um, the first one, there's nothing wrong with the first one. And a lot of times if you're playing with a full band, you kind of want to use this because you got the drummer in there and you got the bass player in there. So you don't need to fill in that empty space. But if you're just doing a small group, you've got that empty space in there, and which is fine. But for me, I like energy. I like the driven songs and to me that up and down, and that chuck sounds a, it fills in the space. Can y'all can y'all tell the difference? Can y'all hear the difference in that? Yeah. So um, left hand. What am I doing with the left hand? So I'm pressing down, opening, but never really letting go. So so it kind of mutes the strings when I'm going up and down. Does that make sense? 
I'm picking up my left hand slightly, so it, it, you still get that, to me it's kind of like that snare effect, but it's not ringing out any notes in between. And you can, you know, and then you can, you can, uh, do that one <laughs> and that's how I would teach myself I was like no that doesn't work but I just kind of find some things that work so um, so ask me some questions because I'm not sure what I mean in the right hand just I just so keep it going. So when you're making that G the way you do like the G how like Randy mm -hmm. or, so like whenever you do a C chord where do you go for your C because you go there for a C. I go C. here and my and thumb doesn't where hit do that. Where do you go for your five? Where do you go for your five on there? I move my thumb. Does that make it? Can y'all all see? And that's your D whenever you go to that. Yeah, so this is my G. I move my fiddle, middle finger. And sometimes I, you hear me on the up instead of just the down. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, ask me something. <laughs> yes. I'm full of questions. Good, good, good. Um, talk about how in case you use you to emphasize a different beat than say in some of the others. Uh, okay. All right. So um so let's take example. We'll stick to the key of G right here. Let's do Mr. DL's song again. Like I, that, like I would typically do it with a, with a two-piece. We'll do a little bit of that. Okay. And then I'll contrast it with um, like the Johnny Be Good song that we did yeah. over there. All right? that seven if you want to right there all right so that's that's a pretty pretty straight uh, rhythmically you know duka chaka duka chaka duka chaka duka chaka as opposed to if I want to get more funky with it that's that's your right hand right there your right hand is is your your funk and your your rhythm right here and kind of how you're blocking and kind of how I'm blocking those strings mm -hmm. uh, yeah it makes it and, and, and I'll play I play really I play hard um, I had a gentleman make this guitar for me and um, it's a beautiful guitar. He modeled it off of my Gibson, my 53 Gibson. And if he were to sell this guitar, it would be very, very, very expensive. And he said, I I'm going to give it to you. His name is Darren Wallace. And he said, I'll give, it, I'll give you this guitar. You promote me, you know, as you go around and you see everybody sees the guitar. But he said, the only way I'm gonna give it to you is if you promise me you play it like you play that Gibson. He said, do not be afraid to put a scratch on my guitar. I want you to play it. That wood needs that, it needs those sound waves. It needs to breathe. It needs to, to gather all that energy that you've given it. And uh, I didn't think twice. I took that guitar and I've been beating it up ever since I got it. But it's that, it's that combination of what you're doing in the left hand, the muting, the letting the certain strings ring, the down and the up. All right, so you get that when you do. That's that snare drum right there. And then um, down, up, 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 down, up. Okay, so it's, it's all of that. And then sometimes you can even hit on here. And you also need your left foot because that's your bass drum. And as you, can see, as you can see, the, the <laughs> microphone went falling off the stage after the first song because I'm, I mean, but that's, that's what completes the rhythm section for me. You know, that's my bass drum and then I've got my guitar and I've got my bass on the walking and I've got my snare on the strings right here. So, um, so back to the rhythm. It's so the back door was, it's pretty straight, right? Um, this one is more funky. Let's do Johnny Be Good. Okay. Okay. Oh, 
let's do uh, Sick and Tired. Let's do that. And, I want to do uh, that one instead. I'm going to do it in B flat. Let's do it in B flat so yeah, I can okay. sing it. Yeah. Sing. Ho, oh, baby. That's definitely a different rhythm than the back door, right? And there was a lot of uh, the muting, a lot of muting of the strings. But to me, that's what fills in the empty space. And if you've ever heard a, a two-piece um, perform that doesn't fill in that space, it just, it mm. leaves you, to me anyway, yes. it just leaves you kind of wanting more. Um, and by doing these little extra things with muting of the strings and with the upbeat and with the tapping, even the tapping in the foot, did y'all notice that it just kind of, it kind of drives it. And I mean, who would think you'd come to a guitar workshop and I'm going to teach you how to stomp your left foot. But to me, it's important, especially when you're doing just a two piece thing like this. And, and I don't consider myself a great guitar player by any means because I, I mean I, I hang around with great guitar players who can pick and do all these fantastic incredible things but I do consider myself a solid rhythm guitar player especially in a in Absolutely. a yeah, yeah. solid <laughs> as a rock it's true yeah yeah so all right more questions more questions I sometimes I do um I don't think I'm aware, because I'm not thinking about it. Uh, you're asking me, so now I'm thinking, well, maybe, maybe I do. Let's see. Absolutely, I do. Mm. <laughs> see, I never even thought about it, but yeah, so evidently I'm blocking with my palm. Um, especially when I, when I hit that, that bass note, I'm blocking everything else right there. And then I come up and let it all go. Yeah. Man, I never really, I never had to break this down before. It's just something that I this is something that I did. Yeah. Yeah, so again, yeah. Um let's do um robare. We're going to go back to a waltz real quick and and I'll show you this is one of those waltzes where I don't want it to be nice and sweet. I think it should be percussive and I think it should be danceable. G? Uh C. C.
All right, so see, that's it. And especially if I'm doing a... I'm doing those things too and she's doing that I'm also playing yeah. or vice versa you know it's it's ways to accentuate those things yeah. to where it sounds full whenever you have and that's a way yeah that's, that's a way right. that you can still have that that snare drum on those closed chords but you also have that that bass line walking down to the C I mean you know it's not it's not as much as the open chords where you would be hitting every note it's just that one note uh, bring it down there but you do a lot of stuff with timing too like instead of doing like da, da, you'll be like da, da, da. and just those things enable another musician to play against that and completely re rearrange that timing yeah and turn it upside down uh, there's a lot of syncopation know, yes, a absolutely. lot of syncopation that happens in there and, and that's not something that we'll be able to you know teach in a you know, 30 minute section but I think if you're, you have to, as a guitar player, you have to listen to what your fiddle player or accordion player or pedal, whoever you're playing with, you need to listen, all right? You really need to listen to what they're doing and find what feels right. Because there'll be times where I'll start a song with a certain rhythm and I'm like, no, that just doesn't work. So I need to either put more or I need to take less. And then when you lock it in, you just stay solid and let these guys that do all that fancy stuff, let them go, but you stay straight and solid so that whenever they're finished going over way over here, when they come back, they've got that landing strip to land and they know that they're gonna be there. You guys have told me that many a yeah, times absolutely. before. Like they can, yeah. they can go over on their rise, they can take their little rips, do whatever they want, but they know that even if they get lost in what they're doing over there, whenever they come back, you're going to be there on that downbeat, ready to go, and, 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 and save their butts. Yeah. <laughs> Just like this. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Or, or play a little lily. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and you're especially, you know, again, I'm kind of focusing this workshop towards a, a small group, a duo or a trio. So it's very important as that rhythm. You don't need to be that fancy person that's doing all that, that fancy stuff. You need to be that rock solid rhythm section who's holding down the fort and let everybody else be fancy. But, but you're the backbone of that, of that group. Because, you know, there's times where if I need to get up and go somewhere, I'll tell Richard and Bo, I'll say, y'all do something while I'm gone. They will not. We I mean, like <laughs> they are like two yeah. of the best players on the planet on their instruments that they play, but they will not play together because there's not that, that solid thing that's yeah. keeping them there. They have to have that solid rhythm. Yeah. yeah. Ask me more. Can you show some of those walk downs? Yes. Okay. So, so for on this, the, the G's are amazing. All right. I, the G's are really easy to walk down. Um, Let's do that attention again, because that's a really one. But uh, so. And then I make my C on this chord. That's my C, because I like the way. So it's on your G, and then you just drop those two fingers down each a string. You don't hit that top string. And that's your C. Uh-huh. Walk up. That's your C. Walk back down to G. And then you can walk down to D. I'll stand. I told you, like, when I learn, I just, 
learn what sounds right. My C minor chord, Richard Como almost had a heart attack when he saw me because I didn't know how to make a C minor chord. I just moved, I just moved my finger over and went, th look at look his face. Uh, he never knew that. Uh, but I don't even know if that's a thing, right? Yeah. But it sounded right yeah. to me, so that's how I played it, you know? I just moved it over one breath. Just Rather than having to bar it somewhere over right. here because I didn't know how to do that, True. it sounded good to me. So again, you know, I'm not really good with chords and <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> my C minor, my C minor, or the whole walk down. The C minor, yeah. So I didn't know how to do a C minor, so I just moved my middle finger down one fret, and you got a C minor chord right there. We, uh, what, which song we played with the C minor in there? We just did it. I don't remember what it was. But any, uh, anyway, so the walk down, uh, walk up. Uh, let's do attention so you'll see it in time. And then you can syncopate. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to tell you one time, Mr. D.L. Menard, he was towards the end of his life, his daughter would bring him, he was in a wheelchair, and his daughter would bring him to little jams and little shows that we had. And we were in Scott playing somewhere, and so she wheeled him in and she put him sitting by uh, Chris Segura, who was on that end over there. And I saw Mr. DL, his daughter, whispered something in his ear. And I saw her face, she goes. Oh. And so she takes his chair and she wheels him around and she puts him right by me. He told her he wanted to sit right by me. So he sat by me, he was close, and he does like that. <laughs> <laughs> And he just smiling at me. I said, Mr. D.L., what you doing? And he just kind of giggled like that. So we started playing a waltz, and I was playing. Mm -mm. You know, I was playing all sweet and everything, doing my walks, and really proud. Mr. D.L.'s right there. He's going to listen. And he squeezed my knee like that, and he said, Girl, if you're going to play that guitar, you play that guitar. And, uh, and if you've ever listened to yeah, Mr. D.L. Right. Menard on his right. walk downs, he, I mean, he, he picks it like that. So, so I, I took that to heart. And so whenever I'm playing, I try to remember. But it's not easy because a lot of times I, <laughs> you hit the wrong string. You know, you, you're going everywhere. But, um, but that also, it's uh, dynamics in your playing and that makes a difference as well too you know so sometimes you might want to use that um let's do it again and i'll show you what i'm talking about okay okay so you see what i'm saying right there you can accent some of those things and that also adds to the fullness in what you're doing, in the dynamics in the thing. And all of that goes to listening and, and, and playing for the song and playing what's best for the song and not really playing what's best necessarily for you, you know? I mean, yeah, maybe you can show off some things here and there, but maybe the song doesn't need that. So pay attention to what the song is asking for and then go in your little bag of tricks and. Do you need that percussion or do you need the open strings? Do you need to accent that bass walk down or do you even need a walk down at all? Maybe you don't, you know? So um, that's, that's the bag of tricks that you have to pull from. Ask me more. Nothing? Yes. We have five minutes left. Wow, I thought this was gonna, okay. Darren Wallace. Darren Wallace was, he worked for Taylor Guitars. He worked for, um, what's the, the round back guitar? Ovation. Ovation, yeah, he Where ran Ovation. What's that? Where is he out of? 
Um, he was up, or? yeah, he was up north, but he's since moved to Nashville, and he's working uh, for Gibson now. Um, he's a fantastic luthier. Yeah, he's really good. Mm -hmm. So shall we? Let's do two more songs. We'll do a two-step and a, a and a waltz, and right. and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right. Let's do um. We'll do a crawfish waltz, and this will this will be in the key of C. Okay. So it'll be a different walk down than the key of G. Um, okay. For those of you, I'll just show it down. So uh, my walk down is to the G, to F. That's my bass line. adds that whole and I, I use my thumb as my my base right there yeah Perfect. what's a two-step you'd like to do um, you want to do mr. Rufus's sure that's a great one yeah that's because that's a lot of that's percussive. that's a bit, yeah that's a whole this, lot of that's all of that and, and very percussive and this is this is um, so you don't have a whole lot of walk downs in here but you got a lot of bows gonna go off into the Netherland over there, and, mm -hmm. and he'll come back, and hopefully I'll be in the right spot. Yeah. Well, Tell him a little bit about this song real quick. This about is Mr. a song Rufus. called uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and uh, it's an old uh, folk song, or old uh, kind of bluegrass song, and Rufus Thibodeau, a fiddle player from uh, our area, uh, played this song, played it a little faster and put a little swing to it, and uh, did a nice uh, version of it, and I've always loved it. So. This, is a, this is a version of Cajun Swing, I guess you, you would call that's it. Right. That's your Cajun guitar workshop. <laughs> thank you all so much for coming. Yep. Wow, I think that's a first for me. Good job. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, guitar, I probably started seriously around 2010. Yeah, uh, I started out on bass guitar, um, and I did that. And then when I started writing songs, well, I, probably in 2009, I guess I started seriously wanting to learn how to play. Uh, rhythm guitar and I'll, I'll never forget I would go to these Cajun jams 
and the first time I was really good at, at songs in G because I could make the G and the, the D and the C. Then we had a song in C and it went to F. And I was like, I could not, those of you who know, like an F chord is almost impossible. And so for weeks, every time they would play that stupid song, when it would come to the F chord, I would accidentally, accidentally drop my pick until, until it went back to C and then I was right back on the, right back on the C. So, so it, it took a while to, you know, to master that F chord. Um, but yeah, so probably around 2009, 2010 is, is when I started doing the Cajun stuff. And then I started writing songs. Um, you know, and every time I would learn a new chord, I'd write a new song. <laughs> so that's kind of how I taught myself chords. I, you know, while writing a song, I would find uh, just something that sounded good, but I couldn't tell you what it is, but I just know what it sounds like since he was 17. And I'm not so about 17. four years. Yeah, right. <laughs> I am not 17. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a long time. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much thank for you. coming. Enjoy the rest of the festival, and if, I'll hear if you want to have any questions. <laughs>